So you're thinking about buying a Havanese, this is part two video. Finding a reputable breeder, um, if you've enjoyed the first video, you want to see more videos, um, please hit the subscribe, give me uh, a thumbs up, a like, leave a comment below and hit that little bell notification so you'll get notified of more videos. Come on then Bonnie. Um, so you think about buying a Havanese, you've answered all the questions on the first video, the most important decision you can make is where to get your Havanese from. And you may not know this, but you need to avoid the popular pet selling sites, which is where a lot of people go to look for a dog. They're not where reputable breeders advertise their dogs, very, very rarely. They are associated with low welfare breeders uh, who produce high volume dogs. And that is not the place to get a healthy, happy Havanese from. So where do you go? and it is the most important decision you can make. So start with the Kennel Club, have a list of breeders for the breed, and they have, I'll, I'll put a picture in, Kennel Club Assured Breeder Scheme it's called, and you can find details and contact numbers for all the assured breeders in the breed. Don't email them, because we get a lot of emails, to be honest with you, um, especially during this um, pandemic and people have been out looking for pups and decided that they want to have a dog in as part of their life. Get so many emails that it's hard to reply and, and stay on top of. And also an email doesn't tell the breeder anything about you. They want to talk to you and you need to talk to them. So download that list of assured breeders and ring round and speak to people. Um, but what I will say is not all good breeders are assured breeders. There are plenty of good breeders out there who have probably higher standards than some of the assured breeders. So when you do ring round, ask the breeders you talk to, do they know or would they recommend any other breeders and have they got the number? And they'll happily pass, I, I very often give out other people's numbers, they'll happily pass that information on. So that's the starting point, starting to ring round, speak to people and asking them their recommendations. Uh, another indication is council licensing. Since 2018, anybody by law that sells a pup for profit has to be council licensed. Um, and the council licensing scheme is far more rigorous than the assured breeder scheme. So the council licensing scheme, for my council, there was a document that was between 70 and 80 pages long uh, that I had to fill out and I had to document absolutely every part of our day-to-day -day life, the health of the breed when we went to the vets, all the health records. I have to keep notes of things that I notice on, on health. Each dog had to have an individual feeding plan. I had a home check by the council. I also had a home check by the vet and the vet comes out and he checks your premises. They'll check where you keep your dog food stored to make sure that you can't have mice attacking it and things like that. It's a very, very rigorous process and um, a big commitment and on a breeder's part to go down that route. So council licensing is a five star system. Um, I've got a five out of five star license, which I happily put a picture in here. So even if somebody's council licensed, they could have one stars. They can be licensed by the council and still have one, only one star. So you'd have to ask yourself, why have they only got one star? What is it about the breeding processes that means they've not got a higher rating? So it's something to ask and or anybody who is council licensed when you visit should be showing you and it should be on display, the license, and you can check the days it has an expiry date and you can see the star rating. So by ringing round, by asking a couple of basic questions, you should have a list of people that um, you can contact. So now's the time to start thinking about what you're going to ask them when you ring round and the questions. I will put a link in below to the Havanese Club of Great Britain, of which I'm a member, um, and they have some excellent puppy buying advice and an excellent list of questions that you can ask. Um, but a breeder, if somebody rings up and they're just making an inquiry, whether they've got pups or not, we should be happy for you to visit. I let people come just to meet the Havanese because they are a rare breed. Some people have never met them. 
so I will let people come and just meet the dog. It, it means I'm promoting the breed. I want people to be interested in the breed. And if they're going to come and visit when I've not got pups or when a breed has not got pups, it means they're really interested. And that's what, as a breeder, you want to see. Um, but a breeder should be, make the time for you to visit as well. They should meet you um, and know you before they would ever commit to letting you have a pup. But it also gives you the opportunity to see the environment that the dogs are raised in. Uh, and meet the dogs that are going to be bred from and see the characters and what they're like. You know, you can get your hands on the dogs before the litter's even here. And do this and visit as many breeders as you can, and which is not easy geographically sometimes, but it's well worth the time and effort and the investment if you're going to have a healthy dog. And then you can always check them out on the Kennel Club site as well. So you can see if a breed has got what's called a breed accolade and if they're a member of the breed club. So if they're a member of the breed club, it shows that they're interested in the breed, that they're mixing with the peers. Um, and very often breed club members are looking to better the breed, are interested in the health of the breed um, and what's currently going on. So that's another good indicator if they've got a breed club membership accolade. And um, you can ask questions like, are the parents health tested? There are health tests that we recommend for the breed. You know, have the parents got those health tested tests done? And when you go and visit, ask to see them. Because just because somebody says yes, they've been done, doesn't mean to say they have. And have a look at the dates on the certificates to make sure they are current and valid. So we usually recommend like eye certificates are done within the last 12 months. So if you've got an eye certificate that's five years old, it doesn't mean to say that dog's still healthy and nothing has cropped up since. So ask to see the eye, eye certificates. Ask will the litter be eye tested? So we normally recommend having these go with an eye test. The breeder should be telling you about puppy contracts that you need to sign a contract and that will list the specific criteria that breeder allows you to take a pup home on. Um, so for example, it may say that you're not allowed to resell the dog. If for whatever reasons you are no longer able to keep that dog, it goes back to the breeder. They're responsible for that dog. They brought it into this world. They want to know if they're a good breeder where that dog is and that it's happy and it's content and that it's got a good home. And that's our responsibility to make sure our dogs have good homes. So if we home a dog and you can no longer for whatever reason keep that dog, the breeder should be offering to take it back and they will sort it out and find it a home. It's lifelong support and your breeder should be, you should be comfortable that they would take that dog back. And if they're not, and they're not offering lifelong support, then they're only interested in your money, then you've run a mile. So once your dog's born, once the pups are here, you, you want to see uh, or you want to know about socialising, you know, what does the breeder do? So I've doubled the pen today, just to give them a little bit more room to run around. and 10 weeks is the age that we recommend Havanese are homed. So again, if you find a breeder who says they're ready to go at eight weeks, Havanese are a slow to mature breed. The teeth are only just coming through at eight weeks old. I naturally let my dogs self wean and at eight and a half weeks is about the time that they will stop feeding the pups, the mum. So at eight weeks for the pups to be ready to go, they've been taken off their mum and the weaning process has been done maybe a little bit earlier to get them ready to go at eight weeks and they learn valuable social skills from the mum. So they're not ready to go. You can't microchip a dog till eight weeks old. The dogs cannot be microchipped before eight weeks. And the vet won't do them till they're eight weeks old. 
And then after they've been microchipped, you have the litter eye screened and you can't go to any vet. There's very few places that do eye screen. I think we've got two vets in the whole of the north where I live in the northwest, just two vets. So it can be a four hour round trip and there may only be one eye clinic that is in the time period from eight weeks to 10 weeks. Um, so, you know, we need that extra couple of weeks to, to fin finalise the health checks and also they need the social skills from the mum, that she's the valuable social skills um, that are lacking in, in backstreet breeders because the pups have been taken away far too young, had no social interaction and they don't know how to behave. So 10 weeks is the age that a Havani should, should go. Things to be aware of. The dog should come with a vet record. So what's, what treatment has it had at the vets? You know, you want to know that it's had a vet check. So as a breeder, I would take my dogs to the vets and get them all checked over. At five weeks old, listening for um, listening to the heart, just giving them a general check, making sure we've got no umbilical hernias. And I do that before anybody comes to visit so that I know we've got healthy dogs um, before somebody comes and falls in love with a puppy. And then at eight weeks, they'll be, or eight to 10 weeks, they may be having the first injections, that they have the microchips done. And the vet record will have all of this information on it. So you can take it to your own vet and you can continue the treatment that the dog started, that the breeders started. Um, so that should all come as part of the puppy pack, as well as uh, information on food, what food they've got, information on grooming. The puppy pack should contain lots of information. What I would advise is that the breeder emails you the puppy pack information before you take your pup home. It gives you a chance to digest it, because once you've got that little pup, your bits of paper might just go in the drawer and you don't read them. So see if you can get up the puppy pack in email weeks before you take your puppy home so that you've got time to read it and ask the breeder questions. Um, now, the other thing at the moment is the price and cost and how and when to pay. So you should run a mile if your breeder tells you that they've mated a dog and they're expecting pups and if you want to secure a dog, you need to pay a deposit. Those pups haven't even been born yet. You, they don't know whether they're gonna have a successful birth. They don't know how many pups they're gonna have, so how can they take deposits of people? They could only have one. Um, and they should be meeting you. You should be allowed to see the pups, usually from five weeks old, you should be able to go and visit the breeder's home. You want to be seeing the pups in the home environment seeing them interact with the mum, that's that's the law, you have to see the pups interact with the mum, they have to be seen with the mum, sometimes they'll have mum and dad so you can meet dad as well, um, but you should be seeing them in the home environment, you should be able to interact with them, you should see that they're happy, they're social, they're not shy, they're not backing off, um, that they're running around and that they're confident, and only at that point should the breeder be asking you for a deposit. So nobody should be paying a deposit the minute a pup's born, unless they've already met that breeder and that breeder knows them and you know the breeder. If you've never met the breeder, then you do not pay a deposit until you've seen those pups and seen the environment that they're brought up in and that you're happy. Um, so that's the point at which you should be paying a deposit, but about five to six weeks old. The price of having these at the moment in the UK is going up because they're going more popular, but more due to lockdown and the puppy market has just surged. And because they're rare as well, we have got some backstreet breeders just selling them at ridiculous prices, really silly prices. So you should be paying anywhere between 14 and 1800 pounds. And this is February, 2021 for a Havanese. We're seeing, and I've seen on the internet, prices are two, two and a half thousand pounds. And if you, you see that sort of price, you have to question the breeder and the breeder's ethics. So I would run a mile if I saw a price like that for a Havanese. So anybody who wants you to secure a pup at birth or before birth, just avoid at all costs. Only ever pay a deposit when you've met the breeder, you've seen where they're raised, you feel happy and comfortable, and then you can pay a deposit. And it, it's really important to meet the breeder because you, I, I feel you've got to get along. I would want my puppy owners to feel comfortable in picking up the phone and asking me advice on anything for the welfare of that dog. So I know that puppy's going to be well looked after. 
and you've just got to be able to get along and feel comfortable that you can do that and you can pick up the phone and you can ask advice at any time and then finally if you're really not sure the Havanese Club of Great Britain is there for a reason it's to promote the welfare of the breed and we have a committee and you can always ring the secretary and ask for advice if you're not sure the numbers are all on the website and I'll link the website below because committee can change I'm not going to put any names and numbers in here um, but I'll put a link to the website below so you can find out and you can ring the secretary and you can ask their advice if you're really really unsure but just go through the basic research there's lots of help on the Havanese Club website of Great Britain and other websites for other countries and there's lots of advice on the Kennel Club make sure you read and digest before you go out and decide on where your puppy should come from. And good luck in your search if you set your heart on that Havanese pup.